Hello and welcome along and welcome back to Purbeck Valley. Uh, it is the second day of June and the reason why I pulled up slightly short of starting the harvest is because there's lots of things that we need to get done before the harvest starts that will allow us to uh, get things rolling and, and just concentrate on getting our canola in in the near future. Uh, and the first thing from that actually is something down the shop, which has come up and I've kind of gone, yeah, we, we really need that. So we got something in the sales that's come up that I can't ignore. And that is this, the FarmTech Polysys 1550. It's 31,000, got 28 hours on it, but it is a slurry spreader. And our current slurry spreader is leased. So uh, we want to pick this up. We've got the money to pick it up at the moment. And this will be absolutely brilliant for what we want on the farm. Uh, it's got a much bigger capacity. Uh, it's got three times, nearly three times the capacity of our current spreader. And uh, yeah, should do us really nicely. So we'll put the Michelin tires on it. Uh, John Deere manure sensing. Oh, wow. Uh, that would be, uh, that would be a brilliant thing to add. And we'd never used this before. So, uh, yeah, I think we'll add the John Deere manure censoring onto this. We'll take it up to 42. Uh, we've got the money to cover this at the moment. So very much, I think this is going to be a fantastic upgrade for the farm. And in fact, we'll give this a go on our grass fields today and see if it sorts everything out. So we need to put a name on the number plate and the name picked at random from the tractor driver level YouTube channel members and patrons is Jason Hodge. Congratulations to you. Uh, like we did last time where we had a number plate for you, I've gone for JA50NHG uh, and uh, we will go OK to that. And yeah, time to buy ourselves a nice big slurry spreader for the farm. Perfect. So there it is. This is one hell of a slurry upgrade. We'll stick it on the Vultra. The Vultra should have enough power to pull this. I think it's 165 we need. And uh, this Vultra is uh, verging on 200, if I remember correctly. Yeah, our Vultra is 210. And our slurry spreader that we've just got, uh, that is 165. So that is absolutely perfect. Uh, that will work for us well. Let's head down to the cow yard then. Uh, we still have a few bits to do down there. We do need to go and get our current slurry tanker before we return it. It does have a little bit of slurry in it. And we just need to go and uh, put that on one of our grass fields. But I'm really interested to see what effect the uh, John Deere sensor that we've got on this has on our uh, our grass fields and see what happens. And uh, after that, when it comes to the post harvest, just seeing what effect this uh, this machine has on uh, everything, really. Let's uh, load up our Marshall then. We'll get this connected and only got a very little bit of slurry in this, but I don't want to waste any of it. Yeah, 3,360. So we'll go empty this out on one of the grass fields and then we will uh, head to the shop and get it returned. Looking at the nitrogen map, 67 has quite a big area of red down the side here. So I'm going to try and spread it on here. What I'm hoping the new slurry spread is going to do is give a much more even spread over all of these fields. So let's just put this on here and start going. Up this side. Oh, wow. We may get most of this field done with this because there isn't a massive amount of fertilizing that needs doing i just want to get this emptied out on here and we'll concentrate on these darker red patches and try and get all of the parts where 
Uh, it really needs it. We took all the field up to green. I mean, that would be too much. All right. the, the level of nitrogen would be way higher. But uh, that is done. Let's go uh, return this to the shop. And then they'll be able to... Uh, then that gets this off the farm and stops us at being charged money. And the thing is, and what I'm loving about this at the moment is the fact that we are slowly replacing all of the stuff that we have leased because we can't buy it new uh we're we're slowly replacing all of it and uh and ending up with a farm where we own all of the equipment there we go that's gone and that's gonna make such a big difference to us so we're all hooked up now to the new pizza kit. We'll pull it up alongside. Get it into a place where we can refill it and refill it. So this takes 15,500 litres. Uh, that is more than enough, really, uh, for doing both. Uh, well, for doing each field. It's about a, a tank and a half from the old one. And we were doing... Uh, about a tank and a half's worth of trips so this should mean that we do far less trips back and forth to the yard to get more slurry uh also means that we can be more effective in doing contracts with fertilizer we we have way more slurry than we can use and so we can just go and use it on uh the different uh, contracts when they come up but right, i'm gonna test this piece of kit out on field 68 we'll unfold and of course this is an injector rather than a uh, just a spreader so it should be more accurate as well look at the width on this right down and start applying oh lift it that's the only thing is that we can't get too close otherwise we're going to hit walls and things so we want to make sure that we've got enough clearance everywhere it's got an interesting amount of uh, turning circle this there we go bring it out put it down and just see what effect this has on this field i think this is going to be a really good addition to the farm i think it's going to make a lot of difference to uh, how well our spreads go and look at that already that is amazing the difference that is making a much more even spread when we uh, don't have that much of an even spread on here already and uh, we shouldn't have to touch the amount of uh, nitrogen we put on these fields for a very long time. We only need really 65, but it's applying for the soil yield potential on uh, on here. So uh, yeah, nitrogen levels should be really good on this field uh, for a good long time to come. It's interesting, even though we're we're now ending up with a fairly green field the whole way across, we've still got at least one deep orange patch here that is uh, is not actually fully sorted. So uh, I don't quite know why that's happening. We we've got this deep deep green on this side of the field. But uh, yeah, in some places, it's still not quite as even. Uh, I'm, I'm pleased with how this is going. I can't wait to get this onto one of the uh, agricultural, uh, one of the arable fields, agricultural fields, one of the arable fields and try it out over there. Uh, eventually, I think we will end up with some very nice green grass fields that uh, that have tons of nitrogen uh, for the grass to effectively grow every year. Uh, for now, uh, we are, we're just a, a little bit down. Uh, and then 
when it comes to our other fields, I think we're going to have a great bit of preparation on them uh, and uh, going to be able to get to the full potential of whatever crop we put in there. That uh, should be absolutely perfect. I just kind of wish we didn't have this quite so late in the day, but uh, that is the way things go sometimes. So let's place this down and get this going here. It's taken us down to 70,000, but I don't think that's a problem. And yeah, wow, we actually had enough to get the other fields done and just ran out as we were coming into here. So let's go and refill this and uh, get the second field done as well. I don't think I need a huge amount, so we'll only take just over half full. And head back out and load this up. I think this is a base game one, so I don't think this is workable with any uh, pumps and hoses or anything like that. Um, but uh, it is uh, it is quite cool. I love the details that are on this. If I can get in here and have a look at this in a minute. But it's uh, the details on this are really nice. Uh, loving all of the extra or all of the pipes and everything just behind the tractor there now if we back this into the right spot here should need we shouldn't need to go around the headland again so down with that and away yeah this is a little bit ironic because i th i thought that we weren't going to be doing any more of this on here that we weren't going to need to get any slurry onto the grass fields. And in 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 all honesty, we don't really need to get this slurry onto the grass fields. However, uh, the great thing about this is uh, that uh, we aren't doing any harm here. This is possibly going to raise the environmental score a bit. We have got a 90 uh, on the environmental score so it's fluctuating a little bit at the moment and i just want to make sure that uh, we try and keep that as high as possible um but it's just yeah it is definitely doing a better job than the previous spreader was and uh, has given us a much stronger nitrogen uh, across both these fields so going forwards we will probably keep trying to build these fields up keep trying to get them as close to that uh, green level of nitrogen as possible the grass doesn't overly need it but it uh, it will work out for us better in the long run i think so now what i want to do is we will park this up i think we're gonna try and park this up out the way somewhere because this is bigger than the last one if i put it in the back corner of the yard over here over by the tree that is going to be nicely out the way and not cause us any issues we'll disconnect that and then we want to make sure the cows continue to work uh, actually before i go and feed the cows i was considering doing that next we need to move the milk about we've got a lot of milk in fact i think we've got more milk at the moment than we can process for cheese so let's just pop over here we can sell a trailer of milk and uh, and we can put a trailer of milk into our dairy uh, keep that processing stuff and uh, yeah, keep money coming in because we just spent a whole load of money. Let's uh, let's keep the money coming in. So the dairy currently has 1,448. So a, a tanker of milk will be perfect for that. Uh, it's not got a lot of cheese in it. So we don't need to move that about at the moment. Um, where is the cereal? We have a cereal factory somewhere. I have no idea where that is or the carpentry. So there are a few bits on here that we own that we, we we've never really used. The cows, uh, they have a decent amount of food, but going into harvest, I don't want to be worrying about that. And you can see why I wanted to use up some of the slurry. We have a massive amount of it. And contracts 
after we've done the fields this year definitely want to use those to use up some of that slurry and get some uh some money in for free and now we have a piece of kit we can do that with milk trailer is full so let's go and load up this bring it round into here we are gonna have so much cheese to sell this year and it's just gonna bring us in a whole host of money empty that into there and then i want to check best price for milk at the moment milk price isn't brilliant uh we're gonna lose a couple of grand really selling right now and it's at mole valley up the top so once this trailer is empty and we've almost filled up our dairy uh we want to go and refill from over here and then we'll head up to mole valley and go and sell the uh the second trailer of milk because we are creating milk at a fantastic rate now very very pleased with how our cows are working for us before we continue on the farm this video is brought to you in partnership with the awesome people at apex gaming pcs i've teamed up with apex gaming pcs to create a custom line of pcs suitable for everyone from beginner farmers to virtual farming experts and the highest spec machines are also perfect for streaming and content creation apex gaming pcs have dropped the prices on almost all their products by 30 percent so there's never been a better time to go check them out i normally like to run a series until i've got to the point where i feel the farm's success is almost inevitable i still don't feel that way on this series and we're up to 46 episodes 40 yeah i think this is episode 46 and we're up to up to that level and i don't think we're quite there yet we're still leasing stuff on the farm uh we've got things nicely established but we've still got a shortage of fields i feel and uh, until the farm expands to that extra bit we're, we're not really there so it's very possible i think for now i was considering ending this series at, uh, at episode 50. Uh, i think we might go a little bit further and see if we can get ourselves to the point where we can afford those extra fields we've got income coming in rather solidly now from the cows uh, the same thing is true from our crops um but it is not quite as high from the crops as i would like let's empty out this milk sell that off and 80 1412 10,638 off that milk. So uh, I'm quite happy with that. That's a, a decent amount of money uh, from the ex excess of milk we've got. Um, yeah, we'll process as much milk as we can into cheese and make as much money off that as possible. Um, we're producing enough milk now to do that and sell some on a regular basis as well. With the milk sold we can now turn our attention to the cheese and we're just gonna clear this out again uh, the aim here is to avoid having to do anything really other than the harvest during harvest let's uh just that uh, under there there we go and we'll try and get the second one of these lined up as well yeah line it up on the edge of the box and in and we do have a few boxes of cheese about here. Yeah, we're going we're gonna to make a decent amount on cheese. I think it's, from the look of this, it's about a thousand liters uh, per box. And we've already got six boxes, no, 12 boxes up here. I am coming in at the wrong angle on that. Let's just bring this up. So uh, we do need a pallet trailer. We need something to transport these. So uh, we're going to have to find something to do that with. At some point. There we go. That's on. And uh, once we've done that, I think we're going to be... Well, we're going to be rolling in the money with these. These are three grand a box if they're a thousand liters a box. And that is just a huge amount. If they're 2,000 litres, let's see. Let's get one on. 
I had two on then and I wasn't sure. Yeah, it's a thousand liters a box. So uh, if we get two, to, if, we, if we get two of these boxes on uh, at a time, so that's six thousand pounds. Well, we got twelve boxes. Twelve, uh, twelve times three is thirty-six, uh, and this is our fourteenth box. Uh, uh, yeah, fourteen boxes with this. So we're looking at making forty to fifty thousand off this cheese alone uh which is uh absolutely fantastic we're just a couple of months out from being able to go and sell it uh as i said we need to find something to transport it on so a nice flat trailer and once we got that uh we should be in the money we really are gonna be raking it in at that point i'm not gonna get that last box instead we will drop off the forks here i want to take them back to the main yard because they are by far the most useful tool that we have on the front of this Is that connected yeah there we go that's disconnected and uh, we then want to get the bale spikes hooked up which are just around the front here and start getting some bales into our mixing wagon here and i think we should only need to do a couple of rounds of this today to top up the cows properly they are getting through stuff a bit quicker and this is what i mean by uh, earlier saying that the farm is doing well but the farm isn't at its full potential yet does that no you've got the front tool selected on this uh, it doesn't allow you to move the arms at all, which is a little bit odd. Um, but uh, yeah, it's uh, they're go they're definitely going through this feed a lot quicker, and as a result, we're not quite as stable as we might otherwise be on here. And uh, we do need that expansion. We do need to really add field thirty two to our grass fields, but we can't do that until we've got the uh, extra arable fields to make up for for the loss just turn on the mixer quickly there we go and that just helps i think that helps the bales maybe to mix a little bit faster unwrap the first two bales be very careful about which ones i unwrap although doesn't matter so much on this first lot because we are uh, gonna take a second lot as well nice thing about the telehandler that i can do with the tractor I can just turn out of this and uh, and get this into position. We're going to have the grass probably to do second day of August, quite possibly. So I think uh, like last month, we'll probably do both days in August. Uh, we'll do the harvest on the first day. And, uh, and then on the second day, we'll do the... Uh, uh, we'll do the grass work. I just realized something. We've done this in the wrong order. It looks like... Oh, okay. This will... At the moment, this is forage. It should go to TMR very quickly, though. So uh, let's just pull forwards and see what my mistake does. So, yeah, it's currently forage empty it out and very quickly yeah is now tmr it's just that balance is just a little bit worse in a uh, little bit worse going at hay first and silage first uh, you're much better off going silage and hay and then you get tmr the whole way through the feed see the effect that that has had is 106 liters of hay now in there instead of it all being tmr that will affect our efficiency a little bit um but it'll be a negligible amount so this time we are gonna go with the silage first let's open up both of those and we have to open these up because they're in the snake we won't be able to actually pick them up and move them if uh, i didn't open these bales up which I quite like because it does, again, add uh, another little bit more realism to what we're doing. 
and we'll get these in i don't think we're going to need more than two new uh loads in here today that should clear everything up so in with the thylage first this time and then we're going to grab a couple of hay bales grab from the left hand side because they have uh, an open side on it is always wise to go with that because otherwise you're just trying to squeeze bales out Over there and there that's got that get both of these in as well this does, does work fairly well it is just that i think we're a little bit shy on how much we actually need from these i'm getting to the point where i'm i'm worried we're going to end up having to do a uh, a split cut. So uh, a cut of silage and uh, hay in one go. And I kind of want to avoid doing that. I'd like to do one of them at a time. But if our fields aren't providing enough feed for our cows uh, by doing that, uh, then that is a bit of a problem. And that is the cows fed. Let's back this out and into the shed. Getting this turn out of here where it doesn't go too sharp is good. Yeah, there we are. That's nicely in the shed. Should just go straighten up a little bit because that is quite close to the bales. And I don't really want to do anything that disrupts the bales. Park that up. And undo it all right i think that is us just about done for the day let's have a look at the shop here and just see if there's anything new come in that might be useful to us not really there's an albert bale handler that's come in but otherwise yeah nothing there so uh i think that's probably us done for the day i'm gonna clear up around here we'll get our equipment all put away for now, though, all that remains is for me to say thank you for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Please leave a like, drop us a comment, and give it a share. Special thanks to all my patrons and channel members. Your support is invaluable in making these videos and helping the channel to grow. For more from Virtual Farmer, check out the links below, follow on Twitch to watch live, and for more videos, subscribe and ring that bell. I will see you next time. Goodbye.